So what is blood cord banking and should you do it? Welcome to the DeConta channel where we discuss all things educational and we never duck away from difficult topics, including the science and rationale behind blood cord banking. As I'm sure you already know by now, your little one is connected to the placenta via the umbilical cord, and that's how they receive their blood and nutrients throughout the pregnancy. What you might not be aware of though, is that there's an option for keeping this blood from inside the umbilical cord stored in a special cryopreservation, i.e. it's frozen in a special way, storage unit for future use, which is a practice that first began in 1993. But why on earth would someone choose to freeze the umbilical cord blood? Well, the blood contained within the umbilical cord is special in that it has hematopoietic stem cells in it. And if you recall from one of my previous videos, linked in the info card popping up in the corner there, stem cells are quite the scientific marvel because they don't have a set assignment of what they're supposed to be yet. In other words, those hematopoietic stem cells from inside the umbilical cord are capable of forming into mature red blood cells, i.e. the ones that carry oxygen throughout your body, or they can become platelets, the cells that help stop bleeding, and or they could become white blood cells, the cells that help fight infections. Their destiny is not yet chosen, so there's still options for what they can turn into. This means that these particular stem cells can be used to treat over 70 different blood-related type diseases and cancers. Think leukemias, lymphomas, myelomas, and sickle cell disease, and so on. There may be even more uses for them in the future that we haven't tapped into yet, but for now, this is the main purpose of freezing the umbilical cord blood, to preserve those stem cells and their potential future use. Now, the whole idea of blood cord banking comes in two flavors. A public bank, where you donate your baby's umbilical cord blood, for free in the hopes of saving another child who is suffering from some blood-related disease, or a private bank where you pay a monthly fee or a yearly fee of some kind in order to have your baby's umbilical cord blood frozen for your own personal use. Say for a sibling that develops leukemia, or perhaps you develop some kind of blood cancer or disease. It can be pretty costly to go the route of the private blood cord banking option, but it could also be the best option for you and your family if the need were to arise in the future for those specific stem cells and having the best case scenario of having a match for your family. So it's sort of like scientific medical gambling. However, the donation to a public bank is free. So long as the hospital you're delivering at participates in cord blood donations, you as the mom happen to pass a laundry list <laughs> of requirements to be able to donate that umbilical cord blood, and you have already decided on a place to donate that blood to before you go into labor, since this is not something you can typically do after the birth has already occurred. There are two hiccups with the whole blood cord banking idea or ideology in itself as well that you should be made aware of. The first hiccup is that if you're planning to delay that cord clamping in order for your own baby to reabsorb the nutrients that are in the umbilical cord for the benefit of your own baby to be able to absorb the nutrients that remain within the umbilical cord, a tactic that is especially useful for preemie babies, then there might not actually be enough blood left in the cord for you to be able to donate it or store it to begin with. The second hiccup is that if your little one ends up developing, unfortunately, any kind of blood-related disease or cancer themselves later on in life, and you paid to have their blood stored in a private bank this whole time, then you probably wasted your money in that regards because you probably can't use their blood for their own benefit at that point. Since their own blood will likely just re-emerge with the same blood-related disease or cancer that you're trying to fight after the bone marrow transplant would take place, you'd probably have to end up getting and paying for donor umbilical cord blood from a public bank anyways. Again, the scientific gamble as to whether or not this storage privately is worth it for you, and whether or not the medical science field will have expanded uses for that umbilical cord blood in the future that we haven't tapped into right now. Overall though, if you can donate, please do it. 
the hospital is just going to dispose of that umbilical cord blood one way or the other if you didn't have a plan for it to begin with. When it could have been used to save another person potentially, at no cost to you. Me personally, I'm definitely feeling like I want to donate this baby's cord blood, assuming she's not a preemie and doesn't need the delayed cord clamping and so on and so forth. But what else has week 36 of pregnancy felt like in addition to that? Here's the summary. The uh, contractions are pretty intense. My whole stomach is like rock hard. Oh my goodness. Like, this is like one of those, like almost labor Braxton Hicks contractions. I don't have as many as I did with my first, like practice contractions, but when I get them, they are uh, pretty intense. I just feel really depressed today. My boobs hurt so bad right now. There are no words. It's just painful. And what is our baby up to at week 36 of pregnancy? Our baby is likely between 17 and a half and 19 inches long, or 44.5 to 48.3 centimeters long at this point. And they likely weigh at least five and three quarter pounds, and could probably weigh past six and three quarter pounds, but somewhere within that range, probably. Remember that the length and weight of babies at this point is highly versatile. Since not a lot has changed since last week's length measurement, the baby is probably still around the length of this baguette, as seen in the model here. The fine lanugo hair that was all over your baby is starting to fall off at this point along with the vernix cassiosa. And the vernix cassiosa was a thick substance that coated over their skin, sort of like a wetsuit protecting their skin as they float around in the amniotic fluid. Once both of those things fall off of your baby and mesh with the amniotic fluid like a cocktail, your baby will end up swallowing that and that's what's going to turn into your baby's first meconium poop. Your baby should also be head down position right now, hopefully, in preparation for birth. But don't panic if they're not, because there is still some time for them to get to that point. Locked and loaded for birth. So be sure to ask your OB if the hospital you're delivering at accepts donations to public cord blood banking, or be sure to research the places and prices of private blood cord banks if that's the route you choose to go. Are you planning to privately bank or donate your baby's umbilical cord blood or neither of the two? Let me know in the comments below. These videos take quite a bit of time to make, but it would only cost you one second to like this one. To join me next week in this 40 week pregnancy series, following me all the way to the birth of my little one, all you have to do is subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next week.